I am Professor Anish Vora and I welcome you all in this video lecture. In this video lecture we will study about uh, starting torque for capacitor start motor. In case of capacitor start motor we use additional capacitor in series with starting winding. Capacitor start uh, induction motor is more expensive compared to resistive split induction motor but at the same time we have very high starting torque compared to resistive split induction motor and at the same time we have low starting current in case of capacitor start induction motor the procedure to design starting winding is almost similar to that of the resistive split induction motor. We consider that uh, our design of main winding is complete based on the running performance required from the single phase induction motor. Now based on the starting condition we have to design our starting winding. In capacitor split induction motor starting winding as well as we have to design the required capacitor we consider that uh, main winding design is completed and we have to find best suitable starting winding and capacitor but sometimes in capacitor split induction motor if best suitable combination if not possible if we have to alter our some of the design parameters of the main winding also. Now as we know that starting torque in case of capacitor split induction motor is comparatively very high because we consider that the starting current of the main winding is constant and starting current for the starting winding or auxiliary winding is uh, leading to our voltage axis and that is why the difference of the angle between both the starting current is very high and we know that uh, starting torque is proportional to TS that is our starting torque is proportional to ISA that is starting current of the auxiliary winding and sine of theta m minus theta a where theta m that is the uh, angle of starting current of the main winding with the voltage axis and theta a that is the angle of starting current of the auxiliary winding with the voltage axis but uh, now we know that the starting current of the auxiliary winding is the leading current and that is why we have very high starting torque now we have an equation ts that is our starting torque and we have derived this equation in our previous lecture and the equation is 1 upon 2 pi multiplied by P. P is number of pole. K. K is the turns ratio. R. R and S. That is a rotor resistance referred to the stator divided by F. F is our frequency multiplied by ISM and ISA. ISM that is starting current of the main winding and ISA that is starting current of the auxiliary winding and multiplied by sine theta m minus theta a. This equation does not take into account the effect of magnetizing current. Hence we have to use one multiplication factor and that is CR. Normally CR can be taken equal to the turns ratio k. So now if we substitute or we introduce multiplication factor then our equation becomes Ts that is starting torque is equal to 1 upon 2 pi multiplied by P multiplied by K multiplied by Cr multiplied by R, Rm des divided by F and ISM ISA multiplied by sine theta m minus theta a. Now we can substitute values of ISM 
and ISA that is starting current for the main winding as well as for the auxiliary winding. Then our equation of the starting torque it will change to 1 upon 2 pi multiplied by P multiplied by K multiplied by CR multiplied by R, RM dash and divided by F that is our frequency. But now for ISM and ISA we have introduced V by Zm and V by Za. So ultimately it becomes V square divided by Zm and Za. Where Zm that is total impedance of the main winding and Za that is total impedance of the auxiliary winding and uh, sine theta m minus theta m. But one thing we should uh, notice at this stage that uh, impedance of the auxiliary winding Za now ZA is we have capacitor connected in series with the starting winding so we have to consider reactance of the winding as well as reactance of the capacitor while calculating total impedance of the auxiliary winding this point is very important so our uh, equation change to if we sin theta m minus theta a, we can uh, introduce sin theta m cos theta a minus sin theta a cos theta m. Now we can introduce all the values of uh, sin and cos in terms of uh, resistance and reactance. Then uh, we have finally the equation for starting torque. That is a 1 upon 2 pi multiplied by P multiplied by K multiplied by CR multiplied by R RM dash and divided by F multiplied by V square and multiplied by this quantity in terms of resistance reactance. So RA multiplied by XLM. XLM we know that it is a leakage reactance of the main winding minus rm now for the reactance of the auxiliary winding we have xla minus xc xla minus xc xc that is a reactance of the capacitor and xla that is leakage reactance of the auxiliary winding so to consider total reactance we take xla minus xc same way for Zm square, we take uh, Rm square plus Xlm square and for Za square, we consider Ra square plus Xlm minus Xla minus Xc square. So this is Zm square and this is Za square, the total impedance of the main winding and total impedance of the auxiliary winding. But now we have changed our equation of starting torque for capacitor start induction motor where Zm that is the main winding impedance and it is under root Rm square plus Xlm square. Same way we have Za that is auxiliary winding impedance and it is under root Ra square plus Xla minus Xc and square where xc that is reactance of the capacitor so this way we can change our starting torque for the capacitor split induction motor we have capacitor reactance and then we can calculate the required starting torque and if the required starting torque is not as our design then we can change some of the parameters of our starting winding it may be a starting winding it may be a capacitor so in case of a, a capacitor split induction motor the value of capacitor is very important so in our next lecture we'll design capacitor for maximum starting torque in case of capacitor split induction motor so thank you for watching my video keep watching Thank you very much.